Hey creative people, so today I am going to give you a little sketchbook tour of this sketchbook that I had just finished um, doing and it's going to be a good one. It's going to be a whole bunch of uh, very hopefully inspiring paintings that you enjoy me talking about. So let's dive right into the video. I really like this sketchbook. It is a Stillman and Burns sketchbook uh, Zeta series and in Zeta series it's basically smooth paper extra white and um, it's the thicker cardstock so maybe I think 200 plus um, GSM rather than the thinner one. It's my favorite series. I have a couple of others and I think I'll be buying this one again because I've just finished it. All right so first page of the sketchbook. Um, I really like this piece here. I believe it's watercolor with a bit of neo color tools um, and even some Posca paints that I was experimenting with. Uh, 4th August 2023 is my date. So when I bought these sketchbooks, I actually went to the art store and I got a couple of supplies I've never tried before as well. And those uh, supplies, um, one of them is these Neo Color Tools. And Neo Color Tools by Carandash is actually a water soluble wax pastel. So if you have been curious about oil pastels, um, and you don't like the messiness of oil pastels, you should try this because A, it's not messy as in it doesn't rub off as much. It, it still does a little bit as you can tell, but not as much as oil pastels and it is water soluble. So you can actually put water over it and dilute it. It's really, really fun. So with this piece here, I can't remember if I used the reference, I probably did, but I wanted to just play with layering. I also have a bit of gold paint as you can see and the gold paint I use is this one here by Kurotake um, and it is the gold paint that I, I do use a lot and I use it very often and I think I need to replace some of these uh, little um, uh, pans, um, the great paint. So all these products can be found in the description below um, if you're interested in looking them up. So what else do I have? And I use um, these little dots here, these perfect dots are not a paintbrush. It's actually some Posca paints. So Posca paints are these um, mark acrylic markers that come in marker format. And I think I got a whole bunch in lockdown um, when you know I was stuck at home and I just needed lots of art supplies. So I don't use all them often, so I still have a lot of colors. And I tend to take them out and play whenever I feel like playing with them, which, which isn't super often. So this is the first page. I'm really happy with it. I'm really happy with a lot of paintings in here, so I can't wait to um, turn the page and show you more. All right, just as I said that, this is one of the paintings where I, I, you know, I didn't really like so much. I don't know, it was, I think I was testing out some acrylic gouache. So I have a bunch of acrylic gouache by Holbein. Let me put this all away. And acrylic gouache is interesting. It's basically gouache, but it's um, not water soluble as in it's permanent like acrylic. And the lovely thing about gouache versus acrylic paints is that gouache is matte, right? So there is no shine. Uh, well, apart from the gold, the gold is, you know, the gold paint I showed you just now. There is no shine in gouache and a lot of designers like it very much for design. Um, so I need to experiment more with my acrylic gouache and this is what that was. Don't like the colors. I don't know what I'm doing next. Ah, so this is actually a little um, part of a little online course, mini course I did with Sonal Nathwati. She is this amazing floral artist and I bought a little course of her on Domestica and I'm sure it's still on Domestica. And this was one of the exercises where we're meant to just experiment uh, layering all the different kind of mediums over um, a flat acrylic or gouache background. So here I experimented with my Neo colors, the Posca pens, color pencils, markers and all that. So. Yeah, that was just a spread. Um, this one here is me swatching the Christie Rice paint set. So I think this is around the time also Christie Rice sent me, generously sent me her paint set to review. And that's it here. 
and I did a little swatch and then with the swatch I created a little painting using some of the colors. I really really love this set and if you like bright vibrant colors like I do this set will be perfect for you. I mean look at that neon yellow there. Um, there are a couple of colors that I don't usually use uh, straight up like this beigey one here so it's it you know it does give a different feel to my usual paints but I love this gold I love this olive green um, yeah a great set so uh, link in the description below if you're interested in the Christy Rice paint set I also did a whole swatching video and painting video using her paint palette what's next aha uh -huh. so this is the actual project that um, from the course this course that I did with Sonal Nathwati this is the final project and I really, really love it. I learned so much from it. It's basically, you know, how do you paint flowers that are cropped in a certain sort of like tighter, off-center way on a colored background using a mixed media. So I've, I have acrylic, I think the background is just uh, acrylic, acrylics. And I use acrylics for these as well. So I do have some random acrylic paints lying around. They're not super professional quality or anything, but um, I think it worked. And I also layered it with Neo Color too. So I uh, highly recommend her course. I learned so much. I love it. Um, this one I call uh, the I call it a vintage floral piece because I think the reference I was using was a vintage floral piece and this is a time where I was experimenting with um, all these backgrounds uh, that I like to put in different colors and allowing the subject to pop forward so see how like the leaves and a bit of the flowers are popping off the background I think it created a really fun effect I love the colors I use for this, the, the blue, I'm using this um, sort of like ultramarine uh, phalo blue a lot more now. Sorry, not ultramarine, it's more phalo cobalty blue. I, I love this blue, this mid blue. Um, yeah, and then this one is basically in the same vein as, as this one, but I just had a tub of fluorescent <laughs> orange uh, acrylic paint lying around. Let me see if I can. Now, don't ask me why I have this tub of um, acrylic ne uh, floral orange tub. I was very inspired by this whole floral face. So I put that on the background and I just put flowers on. And yeah, it's a bit cray. I don't know if I would, you know, I'll probably next time maybe uh, dial the neo neon a little bit more with some white. But overall, a very eye-catching page. I'm sure you would agree okay this one I don't know this is a mess <laughs> it's very dull I tried to play with the background um, the purple background and I don't know what I use for the foreground oh I think I use my neo colors and yeah and then I just you know went over it with water because it was water soluble and then I sort of like think it looks a bit washed out now I could continue working on this for sure uh, yeah, I might, you know, come back to it and layer it again. That's the beauty of mixed media, right? You can just keep layering on different things to create something fun. I think some, uh, some Posca pans and gold would, would, you know, help this come alive. Ooh, so this is, uh, I love this spread because I think I was doing a course with Laura Horn abstract one of our abstract pieces so i'll link all of these uh wonderful teachers down below i was in this abstract phase still am sometimes and uh, i love the color combo here i think her instructions was to just choose two three or four colors max and create your own bleedy kind of like um Thing. and I loved how the gold and the purple and the blue all mixed together really beautifully um, yeah I think this was also sort of like in the same vein and using a little bit of that scratchy br fan brush yes a fan brush which I've never used before but in her course she's like you know trying out things with a fan brush let me see if I can find a fan brush oh, I have one fan brush here 
There we go. This is a fan brush. So it's got all these like edges that can create these very interesting sweeping lines. I love this. I love the neon pinks together with the ink. Ah, yes. I think I use ink as well. So this bit here and this bit here is ink with a dip pen. Let me get those things out. So I have this dip pen. If you've never used a dip pen before, oh gosh, it's so much fun. Yep. And I just use uh, this ink, black ink. I have a bunch of inks here as well, which I haven't really played around with. But just dipping this glass pen into the ink and then let it drip onto the page. So much fun. So much fun. Okay, September, 6 September. Um, I think I made a, a YouTube video which featured this painting and two other sketchbooks that I was working on at the same time. So that's something fun you could do if you like to not stop painting and you just cannot wait for things to dry. You can work on several sketchbooks at the same time. So once this layer is dry, you work on another one, so on and so forth. I won't pop into the other sketchbooks in this video, but I, I liked how crazy and loose this is. I like that I just put all these dark, almost black. I believe this is Neo Color, Neo Color to the black, or is it the dark blue? I don't know which one, but um, I just love that. And have very expressive brush strokes here and there, and a lot of Neo Color around it. Mm, this one's also another a bit gone crazy, gone loose type one. Uh, I made the background different colors, obviously, and did I do the flowers first? I don't know. I don't even know which way. Well, I, I've dated it this way, so it's probably this way. Um, yeah, all the colors, all the colors. Not my favorite spread, but I could feel like I just needed to get something out, you know? All right, this one also was very fast, very loose, very crazy, and just experimenting with cooler colors. So this peacock green or em I don't know, this emerald green is something I just don't use very much of because when you do florals, um, well, I, I don't know, you can you get paint green, but it doesn't feel like a very natural green. Anyway, um, I was experimenting with marks, uh, with patterns with splatters and with colors oh this is this is one of my favorite sketchbook paintings and it's of um, irises obviously and let me grab the reference book for this painting so I'm obsessed with this book if you've seen some of my paintings videos you might recognize that I reference this book a lot and um, pretty sure these irises is from this book somewhere. Let me, let me. This book is called Petal by Adriana Picker. Adriana Picker, and I just, I just get so inspired. You know, sometimes you you look at a book of paintings or reference for the the reference for you to be able to paint something beautiful, but this book not only does that, it also inspires me. It just makes me feel so, so good inside in terms of how, it, I don't know. Anyway, uh-huh, there we go. The iris, yes, there it is. Oh, just look at that. Look at the folds, the colors, it all informed my sketchbook painting. If you're interested in buying this book, I'll link it in the description below. It's a great investment. Pretty sure it's been sold out for a while. I think maybe it's because of me. I keep sending people there, um, but I love this book. All right, next. Okay, so this one is just a cutesy paint patterny thing that I wanted to paint to de-stress. Sometimes I just can't think of anything to paint. I just paint a, a page of flower patterns. And this is good to experiment with, um, you know, flower shapes, flower type, flower size, flower colors, and what goes with what, playing with contrast, space, and all sorts. So this is a really fun thing to do. 
Oh, I like this one. I think this was also a lot, a nice sort of like, I'm just going to paint and see what happens. It's got little splatters, it's got drippiness, it's got a bit of blackness. And um, in fact, a lot of my sketchbook paintings, I find it's just really fun and relaxing. No stress. That's the fun thing about it. Oh my God, this is crazy. Um, orange and purple maybe aren't the best friends. <laughs> I don't know. It's a bit cray. Uh, but, you know, it's got good stuff in it. And I just use a lot of very easy brush marks. I think it just looks a lot of dabbing, a lot of like this, uh, which is very soothing. Okay, now I do love this very much. And um, I just love how the turquoise and pink just, just matches each other so beautifully. I like that it's coming downwards and I created enough space here to give it room to breathe. And I gotta remember, sometimes less is more. For me, less is more. I also love the green gold that's happening. Another patterny one with this time a nice little easy blue background that I, you know, painted on. Sometimes I paint the background just because, not because I, I know that the end result will look nicer, it's just because I feel like painting and it's very relaxing and soothing and good practice for water control and brush strokes just to lay a background um, in your painting. I have a video where I paint a background to my flower and I, I'll link it in, in, in the corner here if you're interested. Now this is also just a really easygoing painting. I think for the background, if I'm not wrong, I actually used the Neo Color Tools and then I went over with a watery brush. That's why it's got a bit of that texture behind. Feels unfinished, but it is what it is. All right, I don't know why I turned it that way. Ooh, I love this one. These are orchids and I think it's also from the Petal book. Let me look for them. Let me look. Orchid 55, page 55, orchids. All right, so which, which orchids did I use in particular? Look at these orchids, look at these. I mean, I mean, just like seriously. Okay, I feel I probably used this one. And yeah, I just put two, I made it my own with some floral pink. Um, if you're interested to look at my fluorescent palette, this is the one I use. It's the brand is called Lumi, L-U-M-I. Yep, it comes like that. And I'll link this in the description below too. And I think this is this corally pink that I use for that. I do love it. All right, next. Where are we? Ooh, this is just a, a random non-flower painting, or rather I used my new colors that I painted with my son. Um, I do like this one. This is quite cute. Oh, this one was also just, a, you know, I think it was disorientation just a couple of days or weeks ago. And I, I love this blue. I just love it. That, that phalo blue, cobalt blue. All right, second last painting. I painted this yesterday. I'm not sure what it is, but I wanted to just paint drippy, strokey stuff with my paintbrush. So very much abstract. I think this is a bird of some sort and this looks like a little snail. Um, yep, it is, it is just a painting. And then today, this is the last one. I painted this today and I believe I also use Adriana's book, Petal. And I need to find it because I'm not sure what flower this is. Sometimes I just turn the page, see a, a flower I like and paint and then I don't even know. What, what is hibiscus? And this is the painting? Uh, the reference that informed my painting. And what is it? It says Purple Pillar Rose of Sharon. It's under the Mallow, Mallow family. I like this because I decided to pay, play a little bit of gold in the background. 
Like I said, sometimes I just want to put a background in and just to feel the paint on the page, that soothing paint feeling. And this is the gold I use. This is the, the, the piece that I use least often because I think it's the lightest gold. And I didn't want to use the gold that I use a lot because, you know, running out. So I really like it. All right. And that's it. I actually have one more page left. So I lied. I had not finished it. But um, I think a part of me is reserving this last page for a really, really nice painting that I want to do. And I don't know what it is yet. But um, yeah, that's it. That's my whole sketchbook. Thank you so much for watching. And there you have it. That's my sketchbook tour. Let me know which painting you like best. And if you have a sketchbook practice and which brands are your favorite. Um, if you are interested to find out how I paint my loose florals, I have a free PDF I call Nine Secrets to Loose Floral. And all you need to do is sign up for my mailing list below to get it and the link in the description below. I promise you it's a good one. Go get it. Otherwise, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!